My name is Dorian and I'm an addict. A few months back, actually it's closer to a year now, I made a video which was talking about being sober for the first birthday that I've had in like 20 years. I ended up making that video private because I ended up not staying sober and it also felt very personal and it felt out of place for a programming channel. And even though I know that there were people that could relate to it. I guess there was a lot of, I don't want people to see this and it's YouTube and talking about personal stuff is good for a personal channel, but when it's a channel where you're talking about learning how to code and you make a video about being sober and all that stuff, it's, it's kind of weird. And then also I didn't stay sober. I've struggled with addiction my whole life. I started doing drugs at an extremely young age. Would always steal sips of drinks from my mom and steal cigarette butts from my mom and steal cigarettes from her when I was younger and didn't even know how to inhale. It's crazy because I have some crazy stories, but I, I did acid for like the first time when I was like 10 or 11 years old. The older neighborhood kids thought it would be funny to give me a half a hit of acid. That was quite the experience. Later on, I, I did more acid when I was older and I've also done mushrooms. Also smoked weed when I was like 12 or 13 as well. But in my teenage years, I drank a lot. Drinking at like 13 and 14 years old, obviously not all the time because it was really hard for us to, to get alcohol, but there was plenty of bums and homeless dudes that, that we knew that we would buy them a beer and they'd buy us a beer. And there was some stores in the neighborhood that would just sell it to us even at like 14 and 15 years old because I, I grew up in that kind of environment and those kind of neighborhoods, they don't really care. You know, it's the kind of neighborhoods that sell loose cigarettes and people are selling crack outside of the gas station. So the gas station attendant selling you a beer isn't unheard of. And things are a little different now. I mean, this was like the nineties. So it's, things are, are not the same, but, but I, I just remember doing that stuff. And then when I got to my teenage years, I mentioned that in another video that the first time I did Coke was with my mom. I think I was like 13 or 14. It's hard to remember the exact age, but I know I was really young. But when I got to like 15 and 16 years old, that's when I think my drug addictions got to their worst, at least with the amount and the types of drugs that I was doing. At that point, I was experimenting with like ecstasy. A friend of mine had an older cousin who was like a pretty big time drug dealer and he used to hook us up with some stuff to move and, and he was moving ecstasy at the time and, and a little bit of acid and uh, coke and all those big drugs that no 15 year old has any right being around, but it was just what it was. It was crazy because I, I remember doing these drugs and then hanging out with some of the rich kids that had houses in Miami Beach and that were well off partying with them and then started doing like coke and we would lace coke and crack in our blunts and we would smoke them. we call them dirties and we call them geeks in Miami and my mom moved me out of Miami with her because she saw I was going down this route and I had at this point I was arrested a few times I was caught with possession with intent to distribute for weed and they they tried to like throw the book at me and I was able to fight it and I, I got lucky that I, I my mom helped pay for a lawyer she like scraped together whatever money she had and I had a little bit of money too and we were able to fight this case and I got off on a crazy technicality where the cops weighed the weed at the scene and it was a quarter pound but they didn't weigh it at a lab and because of that technicality they reduced it to a regular possession and they gave me probation and, and drug court and all those things, which then helped us be in a better spot for us to get out of there. Because if I had gotten a bigger charge, I could have faced like three years and, and I was 17. They, they wanted to try to hit me as an adult, but luckily I was still under 18. And then moving to Vegas, there was a, a good amount of time there when I moved to Vegas where I was still fucking around and I was still doing the same stupid shit that I was doing in Miami. And it's like trouble always finds trouble. And I didn't really want to move to Vegas. It's something that my mom made us do because she could see that it would be a better move for me. And it's kind of like cancer. You got to like cut it out sometimes and you got to let the healthy part grow and kill the cancer. And I think that that was kind of the mindset that she had. She, she wanted to cut me out and take me out of Miami in order for me to maybe become a better person. And eventually I did, but when we first moved to Vegas, I mean, that's when I tried meth. I smoked crack in Vegas and I was like 18 at the time. By the time I got to like 19 and 20, I don't know what happened, but I realized that I was in the same shit, but I didn't get arrested, which was super helpful because there was a couple situations 
that really could have put me in a bad spot. And I remember getting pulled over with my friends in the car and there was drugs in the car and by some crazy luck, the cops didn't search us and we got off. And I think that was one of the real times that I was just like, I think that's it. And I decided to just start working. It was the only thing I knew, right? Like I, I didn't ever really want to go to school. I, I'm a high school dropout. I'm a delinquent, right? And in my 20s, I wasn't too far from that life that I was already living. Like I was, my last time arrested was 17. So at 20 years old, I couldn't see what I should be doing. And the only thing that I had ever had that kind of helped me was a good work ethic. And I, I've talked about it before, even though I did a bunch of other crazy shit and I was selling stuff on the side and, and just doing stupid stuff, I always held a job. And so in like my early 20s, I decided that I didn't want to associate myself with a lot of the, the same shit that was getting me in trouble when I was younger. And I realized that I needed to kind of stop, but my addictions never ended there. I was still an addict. I'm still an addict now. Talking about this stuff is, is hard. I've never gone to an AA meeting or a, a, an NA meeting. I, I did when I got arrested for possession of marijuana as part of my probation, but it, it's not anything I took seriously. I wasn't doing it because I, I wanted to. I did it because I kind of had to, along with community service and other stuff that I did at that point. But. In my early 20s, I turned to drinking a lot. I would smoke weed a lot as well, but there was a lot of time off between smoking weed because I would work jobs that would like potentially random drug test and then I would look for other jobs. So there, there would be like these, these points in time where I would like smoke weed for like six months and then I would stop because I was like, I need to find another job or like they might be doing a random, so I need to quit. And like that paranoia of like, well, I don't want to lose my job. And I remember at one point in time, I was working two jobs. And then that's when I got into like the industry in Vegas and I started waiting tables in Vegas and I got into valet by the time I was about to turn 21. And I, and I moved into that stuff. But all the while, I drank like every night. I remember there was nights where I would like drink a whole 18 pack and I would play video games because when I separated myself from a lot of the friends that were still involved in a lot of bullshit. I'm sorry about the noise. It's, it's kind of loud outside. I'm in an apartment above a bar and it's like the street right here and we're in Spain right now and it's crazy. Okay, it went away. When I disassociated myself from a lot of the people that were just kind of doing the same bullshit that I did all the time and weren't really trying to change their lives or improve their lives, I noticed that my life started to get better, but I became somewhat of a loner. I turned to alcohol and weed and video games, and those were my main addictions for most of my 20s. I mean, from probably like 21 to like 28. And then I started getting addicted to more healthy things, but I'm not gonna front and say that I wouldn't do all the unhealthy shit that I was addicted to. I still drank almost every night. I still smoked weed every single day, like wake and bake till I went to sleep. And then if I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, I'd take a rip and then go right back to bed. This didn't change for a long time. And when I was like 28 years old, I started trying to get in better shape because I had gained quite a bit of weight and I wanted to get in shape. So I remember p 90 x scene and then getting into boxing and then getting into jujitsu. And then jujitsu was probably the most healthy addiction I ever had, but it was 100% an addiction for me because of my addictive personality. Everything I approach and get into that I enjoy, I approach it like an addict. I just go 100% all in. My life becomes that thing. And when I did it with jujitsu, it was one of the first times that I really got addicted to something good. I stopped drinking, but I was still a fucking stoner. It's usually like if I'm smoking a lot of weed, I'm not drinking. If I'm not smoking weed, then I'm drinking more. And if I'm drinking and smoking, I'm doing them both but I decided to cut back on the alcohol and I just became a stoner because stoners all think that weed's not that bad and it's better than being addicted to alcohol, which to an extent I agree, but weed is still a serious addiction and most people who smoke a lot of weed try to debate that one. But if you can't live without something and your whole life revolves around that thing, no matter if it's a substance or if it's social media or if it's video games or if it's making YouTube videos, whatever it is, it's an addiction. And I got addicted to jujitsu. 
I got addicted to learning how to code. When I learned how to code, I really think that my addictive personality is one of the main reasons why I was successful at learning to code because I approached it just like every other habit and addiction I've ever had. I quit doing jujitsu because I wanted to focus 100% on learning to code. I would wake up in the morning, open my computer and code every single day that I didn't have to go to work. Everything was about coding. And I did that until I got the job. And even when I got the job, I couldn't turn that off. Eventually I did because it was unhealthy and it led me to burning out. And I, and I realized that I shouldn't be doing extra work off the clock because I'm not getting paid for it. But I, I thought I needed to do it. And then I still drank a lot and I still smoked a lot. And then my most recent addiction that I developed a couple years ago was making YouTube videos. And again, the same addictive personality. I've been able to turn that off a little bit more and I want to get addicted to being a good father. I want to get addicted to being a good husband. And it seems like sometimes it's harder for me to focus on those things because of these other things that I focus on. And then I realize that I'm neglecting the things that I should be focusing on. And that's what happens with addiction. You get stuck on something and all the other stuff around your life starts going to shit or gets neglected. And when you don't pay attention to the other things and you focus on like that one thing that you're addicted to, those relationships and, and those passions or things that you used to like fall to the wayside because of your addictions. I'm making this video now because a couple days ago while we were in Portugal, I got really hammered drunk. We missed our bus. We ended up getting a hotel and then at the hotel I started drinking with you know my kids at the pool with my wife and it wasn't bad we were having a good time but I was also drinking almost every day at the beach and even though I haven't drank that much I quit smoking weed right before I left for this big trip and I was smoking weed every single day and now I'm doing the same thing that I always do while I'm on this trip. I'm drinking more because now I don't have the weed and after I got really hammered a few days ago at that hotel by the pool with my wife and then my wife and I kind of got into an argument, I'm going through it again and I'm really thinking like some of my addictions just they have to go but I don't want to get addicted to healthy addictions that neglect the things that I'm trying to focus on the most which the whole point of this trip is to spend more time with my family. I guess this is like just me confessing a relapse and maybe maybe putting it out there makes me feel a little bit more accountable. I don't want to be an addict father. I don't want my kids to grow up with that. I grew up with that. My mom was a heavy drinker. She drank every single night. Having that as part of your life is really rough. And I don't feel that I've ever been a bad drunk dad. You know, I don't get angry and beat my kids or yell at them or abuse them in any way. But I do realize that sometimes when I'm drunk, like my kids are witnessing that and I may act like a jerk to my wife sometimes because I'm hammered and she's not happy about it and we get into fights and my kids are getting older and I don't want that. So I need to eliminate the things that I know aren't good for the relationships that I want to nurture and grow and make sure that those relationships are good and that my kids don't have to to just see dad drinking all the time while we're enjoying a day at the beach. Or in the evening when we get home from doing all our exploring and activities that we've been doing. And I hope that this time around I can stick to this and I'm not gonna make this video private. I'm gonna keep it. And I want people to know that, that I'm an addict and it's hard to say that. It's hard to put that on video. It's hard to admit it, but I know that that's what it is. And if I'm not open about it, and if I try to convince myself that I'm not, because that's what addicts do, right? Oh, I'm not that bad. I know someone who's worse. Oh, I'm not addicted. I can stop anytime I want. I've thought that about a lot of things, and I've kicked some serious habits. I've quit smoking cigarettes. I've quit doing hard drugs. I quit playing video games. And yes, video games are a fucking addiction. If you treat them like an addiction. Anything can be a fucking addiction. This is my relapse video. This is my, I'm gonna do better. And hopefully I can update and let you guys know in a month, in two months, in six months, in a year from now that I'm still sober. Cause I do wanna be sober. Cause I realize that I can't just have a couple beers and enjoy myself. I'm a binge drinker. I'm a binge weed smoker. I binge on everything that I like to do. And I only like to do those things because my neurological pathways have been set like that for such a long time. And growing up around addicts and an addict parent and being an addict for so long, it's extremely hard to break the cycle. But I don't want my kids to go down the path 
that I did because they see dad do it. And if I eliminate some of those things, maybe it will help them not fall into the same shit that I had. Everyone lives their own lives, but I wanna make sure that I set my kids up right and I give them the best opportunities to not fall into addiction and to not be like their dad. I want them to be better than me. I'm a role model to them, and if their role model is drinking every day, if their role model is addicted to things and ignoring them, neglecting them, because he's on his computer or he's drinking or he's smoking or he's working and he's not around, that's not a good role model, and I wanna be better. So, there you have it. My name is Dorian, and I'm an addict.